Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. And today we are working on top. It's Aaron's Awakening, Main Men Book Six. This is by Casey Wells. I like the fact that that guy's got a little scruff and his hair isn't perfectly coiffed. I like that. Pain us. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we are, uh, I don't know, four, five, six chapters deep, something like that. And Casey Wells is one of those authors that just gets better and better. Um, I loved her from the beginning, but uh, and maybe it's the series this time around or whatever it is, but like it seems like each one is better than the last and better than the last. Um, these books don't require that you read every one uh, before this, but it sure does help just to understand some of the side characters. Uh, and if you haven't checked out these other ones, read them, listen to them. I don't care. Um, but check them out. They're great stories. And of course, Casey Wells is wonderful. Uh, today is May 27th of 2022. <clears throat> and right now I have it on good authority that uh, Casey Wells is partying it up in Scotland at the Rare Festival over there. So hope you're having fun, Casey. Enjoy yourself. Say hi to everyone for me. I'm going to read you the blurb here. Then we will get to it. Aaron isn't looking for love, but it finds him. And it has a few surprises in store. A laid-back man who goes with the flow. Aaron is happy for his friends who have found love, but he's starting to feel as if he's an endangered species, a single guy. Not that he's looking for anyone, but if someone were to turn up, he figures they would be female, younger than his 27 years, and as disinterested as he was in searching for a soulmate. He's about to get it wrong on most counts. Working in the Acadia National Park, he meets all kinds of people, like that painter he met the other day. A quiet guy, but he certainly made an impression with his dick. Because, for some reason, Aaron can't get him out of his mind. A bruised soul seeking inspiration. Dean has picked up his paintbrush again. A famous artist who spent the last couple of years producing book illustrations under a different name, he's come back to Maine seeking inspiration and leaving the past behind him. The glorious natural beauty breathes new life into him, and it brings with it a new friend, a handsome ranger with a huge cock, the only person Dean has felt a connection to in a long time. But then that connection unexpectedly becomes physical, and Dean's emotions get entangled as fears history is about to repeat. He fears history is about to repeat itself. I don't want to read the right words. He's not about to let his heart be broken a second time. <clears throat> so that is it. Um, and by the way, Casey, you are filthy. I'm surprised that Amazon lets those blurbs go through. So, if you've never seen a Storytime episode before, what you're going to see is me recording a live session. I've already recorded it. Um, I won't be paying any attention to the camera most of the time or anything like that. You're going to hear mistakes. My lovely TNA Tracy will jump in and correct me whenever I fuck up, and trust me, that is frequently. Uh, so, enjoy, have fun, hope to see you all next time. Chapter 5 March 31st Dean liked Hannaford's. As supermarkets went, it was well-stocked and even managed a few surprises. He was looking at one of those. Coffee-flavored brandy? That's just wrong. Mm. He was looking at one of those. Coffee-flavored brandy? That's just wrong. Came a voice from behind him. Dean turned and smiled when he saw... I had him flipped around. Let's go back to coffee-flavored brandy. Stocked and even managed a few surprises. He was looking at one of those. Coffee-flavored brandy? That's just wrong, came a voice from behind him. Dean turned and smiled when he saw Aaron, dressed in jeans, his upper body hidden beneath a coat. His red chopping basket sat at his feet. Aaron pointed to the brandy. Why ruin the taste of perfectly good coffee by adding brandy? He chuckled. I was thinking pretty much the same thing. He looked Aaron up and down. Not working today? The lack of uniform was a bit of a giveaway. This is my day off. Except it's already full. <laughs> Groceries, laundry. I was hoping to find time for a walk later. How's the painting going? Aaron's eyes twinkled. You finished it, right? I mean, you've had five days. later. How's the painting going? Aaron's eyes twinkled. You finished it, right? I mean, you've had five days. 
Dean loved a guy with a sense of humor. The canvas is ready. I've primed it, and what does that entail? He put his basket down and counted off on its fingers. First, put a wooden frame together, stretch the canvas over it and staple it. He sized it with rabbit skin glue, then Aaron gaped. Tell me you buy that stuff, because I have visions of you boiling innocent little bunnies. Dean laughed out loud. Yes, I buy it. You can use PVA, too. It helps to stop fluid from leaking through, and it stiffens the fabric. I usually apply a couple of coats of it. Then I add the acrylic primer. If you don't, the oil from the paints sinks into the canvas and leaves dull patches on the surface. Aaron cleared his throat. I'm thinking ordering from Amazon sounds like a lot less hassle. He cocked his head. So is that what you painted? Oils? Dean nodded. I tried acrylics, but I'm far happier with oils. He smiled. And here we are, having another conversation. An unexpected but pleasurable one. Aaron peered into his basket. Are you done shopping? Because if you are, we could continue this over coffee. He grinned. I can recognize a fellow caffeine addict when I see one. The abruptness of the invitation took him by surprise. Why not? The abruptness of the invitation took him by surprise. Why not? Can you recommend a place? Dean wasn't adverse to coffee and chat with a handsome park ranger. Sure, there's a great coffee shop right around the corner from my house. Oh. Did Dean wasn't averse? You it say that with like a question mark. Surprise. I did say adverse Why not? because I thought that's how you say it. What are you saying? Averse. Dean wasn't averse. Oh, for some reason I'm putting a D in there. I gotcha. Thank you. Surprise. Why not? Can you recommend a place? Dean wasn't averse to coffee and chat. Is adverse a word? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I make up words all the fucking time, and that would be another one. I've made up adverse my entire life. God damn, why do... Well, it, there is, but it's, like, related to adversary. Yeah. Don't Not anyone... Not an <laughs> the, the thing is, these people hire me to do these things. They don't realize what a fucking idiot I am. I mean, wow. You really are. A, yeah, I really am. There's another one. Entire life. Adverse. Well, it, it, it is. An adverse reaction, right? That's a word? Exactly. With a D. There's yes. a There's D yes. in it. They got the D right up yes. in there, just like like that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I got it. See, you didn't get exactly what I was saying until I until I did that. Then you understood. <laughs> yeah, that, that, were, that did it. That's that right there. That's an adverse reaction right there. That's what that is. Okay. Now every time you think of okay. adverse, yeah, you're gonna think of that right. Maybe maybe I should make that smaller just to like that. Just like that. Is that <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I amuse myself for hours. I'm just for minutes. I mean, really, it's I'm an old man. It's anyway. I'm really good at it though. Um, so Surprise. here we go. Why not? Can you recommend a place? Dean wasn't averse to coffee and chat with a handsome park ranger. <laughs> now I can't do it without laughing. <laughs> he wasn't averse. <laughs> All right. Surprise. <clears throat> He Why probably not? is verse. Can you recommend a place? Dean wasn't averse to coffee and chat with a handsome park ranger. Sure. There's a great coffee shop right around the corner from my house. And they have the most amazing pastries, too. Apple coffee cake, banana bread, scones, chocolate peanut butter cake. Stop right there. You had me a coffee. But then he went and said the two magic words. Chocolate peanut butter cake exists. How did I not know this? Aaron beamed. A guy who loves coffee, chocolate, and peanut butter? Then let me take you to heaven. Just looking at Aaron got him halfway there. Dean glanced at his groceries. Uh, it might have to wait. I've got frozen stuff in here. I should really take all this home first. Hey, not a problem. You in your truck? Dean nodded. Then follow me. I live real close. It's just down Cross Street. Uh, right on the main street, then the left. 
If you want to put your frozen stuff in my freezer, there's plenty of room. Maybe it was Aaron's job that made him so helpful. Whatever it was, it was charming. Whatever it was, it was charming. Okay, I can do that. I just have to find a couple more things and I'm done. I'll meet you in the parking lot. Take your time, I'm in no hurry. Anything to put off doing laundry. Aaron lifted his basket. I'll go pay for this. Then he headed for the checkout. Dean consulted his list. He had to smile when he saw the last item. Coffee. Once he'd paid, he walked out of the store and through the parking lot to his truck. Aaron waved from his truck and he waved back. Dean stowed his shopping bag, started the engine, and waited as Aaron pulled out of his space. He hadn't been kidding about how close he lived to the store. Dean reckoned they were outside Aaron's house in under four minutes. And they were outside Aaron's house in under four minutes. He parked behind Aaron's truck and glanced at their destination. It was a townhouse, its exterior walls covered in cream cedar shakes with coffee. <laughs> you know, I think it was after the, uh, two books ago in the series, I had to finally look up what the hell cedar shakes were. Four minutes. He parked behind Aaron's truck and glanced at their destination. It was a townhouse, its exterior walls covered in cream cedar shakes with buff-colored tiles on the roof over the front porch, and a batch can... One more time with feeling. Four minutes. He parked behind Aaron's truck and glanced at their destination. It was a townhouse, its exterior walls covered in cream cedar shakes with buff-colored tiles on the roof over the front porch and a patch containing flower beds in the center of the plot. One more time, without my stomach. Four minutes. He parked behind Aaron's truck and glanced at their destination. It was a townhouse, its exterior walls covered in cream cedar shakes with buff-colored tiles on the roof over the front porch and a patch containing flower beds in the center of the plot. Steps lined with white railings led up to two front doors, a pair of octagonal windows between them. Did I say that right? Octagonal. Octagonal. That was close. I would... I was averse to saying it incorrectly. <laughs> Steps lined with white railings led up to two front doors, a pair of oct octag, octag, tag, tag, yes. tag. You said yes to a multiple choice question. Tag, octag. Tag. Thank you. Steps lined with white railings led up to two front doors, a pair of octagonal windows between them. That was right? Yeah. All right. Sorry, I kept it. Tag, tag, tag. It's led up to two front doors, hmm. a pair of octagonal windows between them. Aaron took the steps in long strides, which wasn't surprising. He had to have four inches on Dean. Aaron led him into the kitchen and pointed to the freezer. The bottom drawer is empty. Now, if you've got anything that needs to be refrigerated, there's room in the fridge, too. Aaron placed his shopping bags on the square table in the middle of the room and proceeded to unpack his groceries. Dean tried not to get in his way. And before long, all the food was out of sight, and the non-food items were in a bag under the table. You have a nice place, Dean offered. The living room was long, but not cluttered, and at the end of it, French doors opened onto the yard. Out. Dean offered. The living room was long, but not cluttered, place, Dean offered. The living room was long, but not cluttered, and at the end of it, French doors opened out onto the yard. Aaron smiled. It's small enough that I don't rattle around in it, and big enough that I can have all my friends stay over. He bit his lip. Well, a year ago I could. Things have changed since then. Before Dean could ask what he meant, Aaron inclined his head toward the front door. Okay, coffee and cake time. The coffee shop sat on a street corner, Inside, pale blue chairs surrounded wooden tables. Mugs hung from hooks on one wall, and on another were small rectangular frames containing books. The walls were salmon pink and covered with photos of Bar Harbor in years gone by. Dean grabbed a table in the window while Aaron went to order. The view of the street outside was perfect. Dean loved to watch the world go by. Aaron joined him. I ordered regular coffee and two pieces of chocolate peanut butter cake. I figured that was a safe bet. Hey, if you hadn't, you'd have gotten me here under false pretenses. I'm having a hard time getting him. 
and two pieces of chocolate peanut butter cake. I figured that was a safe bet. Hey, if you hadn't, you'd have gotten me here under false pretenses. So, Aaron put his elbows on the table and steepled his fingers. How long have you been painting? Since I was a teenager. We used to live in Maine. I was born here. Aaron widened his eyes. Really? Where? This could be Thomaston or Thomaston. 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 And I'm sure, yes. Thank you so much. Aaron <clears throat> widened his eyes. Really? Where? Thomaston. But my dad had to move for his job, and we ended up in Ohio. I was 12 then. Dean smiled. I was always taking Let's photos. Stop. Did you say Thomaston? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, because I thought that's what you said. No, Tom. Tom. Thomas. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's all right. I thought that's what you said, but I. No, I Thomaston. Normally I'm wrong. All right, Thomaston. I got it. <clears throat> Aaron widened his eyes. Really? Where? Thomaston. But my dad had to move here for his job, and we ended up in Ohio. I was 12 then. Dean smiled. I was always taking photos every place we visited. And I kept them all. So when I started painting, I copied the landscapes in my pictures. It was a way of reminding myself of a place where I was happy. A place you came back to. Aaron shook his head. You're the second or third guy I've met who's done that. They came home too. Dean stilled. That's it. That's it exactly. I've come home. The server brought their coffee and cake, and Dean didn't hesitate. As soon as she had walked away, he forked off the sharp end of the cake and tasted it. He was pretty sure the sounds coming out of his mouth were almost orgasmic. But Aaron was nodding, his eyes bright, so he couldn't have been that bad. That is awesome. Then he realized Aaron was gazing at him inquiringly. Maybe his noises had been more noticeable than he'd thought. Dean, Aaron murmured. Anna. <clears throat> Maybe his noises had been more noticeable than he'd thought. And Monty. Maybe his noises had been more noticeable than he'd thought. Dean. Aaron murmured. But Dean what? Durrell. Aaron stared at him. You didn't do a painting of Owl's Head, did you? In 2002? It was Dean's turn to stare. How did you know that? Talk about spooky. One of my closest friends, Levi. He lives with his grandmother, and for as long as I've known him, that painting has been hanging over the fireplace. She said she bought it 15 years ago in a gallery in Portland. It was signed D.D. Um, she says she bought it. Same thing. <clears throat> mother and... For as long as I've known him, that painting has been hanging over the fireplace. She says she bought it 15 years ago in a gallery in Portland. It was signed DD 2002. Dean was flabbergasted. Okay, this is weirding me out. I gave that painting to Mrs. Solomon. Who was she? And when was this? She was our babysitter in Ohio. She babysat me and my younger brother, Ash. That painting was one of my first. How in hell did it end up in a gallery in Portland? Did she give it away? Maybe she didn't like it. She'd seemed pretty pleased with it at the time. Or maybe she sold it? Aaron suggested. Dean considered that idea. I was 18 when I painted it. Aaron's mouth fell open. Oh my God. It's an amazing painting. You did that at 18? And you gave it away? He shrugged. She'd been a wonderful babysitter. I was going off to college, and Mom made me clear out my room. There had to have been four or five canvases, and I made gifts of them to Mrs. Solomon, relatives. By the time I graduated, I had a whole lot more of them. My dad had a business card made up for me, and Mom produced a flyer with photos of my work. Painting was all I ever wanted to do. My parents wanted to support me. Must have been tough, though. How many stories are there of starving artists? Don't they say an artist doesn't get popular until they're dead? Dean laughed. <laughs> then I guess I was lucky. When I came home from college, 
I sent my flyers to several galleries, and one in Pennsylvania wanted to exhibit my work. So I crated up my paintings, and off they went to Pennsylvania. That was the start of a great business relationship. I painted all day, and I was as happy. A great <clears throat> business relationship. I painted all day, and I was happy as a clam. The gallery sold my stuff as fast as they got it. When I reached 24, I got tired of creating up stuff, and I decided to move to Philadelphia, to a place near the gallery. But then I could afford it. Aaron got out his phone, and Dean frowned until Aaron glanced at him with a sheepish grin. Sorry, I'm Googling you. Dean laughed. How long have you got? I spent ten years producing a lot of work. Then Aaron's eyebrows scrunched up. What have you just read? Aaron raised his gaze. <clears throat> Here's producing a lot of work. Then Aaron's eyebrows scrunched up. What have you just read? Aaron raised his gaze. It's an article from the New York Times arts page. What happened to Dean Durrell? It's dated three years ago. His stomach clenched. Stop. Repeat that about the New York Times. What have you just read? Aaron raised his gaze. It's an article from the New York Times's. You want me to say Times's? Okay. <clears throat> that what have and you whatever. just read? Aaron raised his gaze. It's an article from the New York Times's arts page. What have you just read? Aaron raised his gaze. It's an article from the New York Times's arts page. Whatever happened to Dean Durrell? It's dated three years ago. His stomach clenched. That's another story. And I'll need to be told if I get to know you a whole lot better. He did not want to talk about Lyle. Aaron scrolled. Wait a sec, you painted portraits too? He nodded. I wanted a new challenge. So many people, gallery owners, art critics, art professors, told me... I wanted a new challenge. So many people, gallery owners, art critics, art professors, told me artists painted landscapes or portraits, but not both. I figured that was dumb. Dean grinned. So I started painting portraits. A totally different experience, but I loved it. Aaron was still scrolling. Scrolling. It's a totally different experience, but... I loved it. Aaron was still scrolling. Wow. You painted all these people? But there were some really famous faces here. Dean gave a shrug. What can I say? Word got around. Mostly due to the owner of one of the galleries that exhibited my work. He was friends with Raymond Wyatt and... Raymond Wyatt, the movie actor? The one who starred in Empire of Glass? The Winds of Forever? Dean smiled. The same. Anyway, he suggested to Raymond that I paint his portrait. Raymond liked the idea. We had two sittings. I worked from photos in between, and he absolutely loved the end result. Suddenly I had celebrities filling up my voicemail, asking if I'd paint them. Aaron's gaze grew thoughtful, and Dean had a sinking feeling. He'd want to know what happened to bring a halt to ten years of productivity. Time to steer the conversation in another direction. But I've talked enough about me. Tell me about Aaron, Park Ranger. Well, not much to tell. I was born in Wells, went to school there, did my training to be a ranger. You always knew that was what you wanted to do? Aaron nodded. My mom brought me to... <clears throat> you always knew that was what you wanted to do? Aaron nodded. My mom brought me to Acadia all the time when I was a kid. I spent so many summers here. Not to mention any vacation time when I could persuade Mom we really needed an Acadia fix. Dean chuckled. I like that. Maybe that was what I needed, too. A main fix. He'd picked the perfect place. Acadia fueled something deep within him, inspiring him. Then he recalled Aaron's earlier words that had intrigued him. 
He took a drink of his coffee. You were talking about having your friends over, and then, I don't know, your expression changed. Aaron's breathing hitched, and Dean hastened. He hastened. That's what he did. Your expression changed. Aaron's breathing hitched, and Dean hastened to backpedal. Hey, you know what? It's none of my business. You've known me for all of five minutes, right? Aaron smiled. You painted something I've loved looking at for years. That feels like more than five minutes. He ate a little more of his cake, then followed it with a mouthful of coffee. When I was in high school, I made some really good friends. We didn't all meet at once, and some gravitated toward... <clears throat> when I was in high school, I made some really good friends. We didn't all meet at once. Some gravitated towards us. When I was in high school, I made some really good friends. We didn't all meet at once. Some gravitated toward us at different stages, but the thing is, we stayed friends. There are eight of us. Well, there were. That started to change last summer. He held up his hands. Not a bad change, I have to say, just unexpected. He paused to drink, and Dean remained silent. Finn was the first. He turned up to Grammy's birthday party with a boyfriend, Joel. Finn's gay? Aaron grinned. Finn, Seb, Levi, Ben, Sean. Ben only figured himself out a few years ago, and we didn't have a clue about Sean. But that was understandable, given the circumstances, which I'm not going to go into. Dylan is bi, Noah is ace, and it seems I'm the only one who's dated women exclusively. Ace. <clears throat> and it seems I'm the only one who's dated women exclusively. I mean, I still suck a dick occasionally, but... Ace. And it seems I'm the only one who's dated women exclusively. Dean blinked. That's a pretty diverse group. And you're straight. Damn. What surprised him... I don't like the way I did that. Dean blinked. That's a pretty diverse group. And you're straight. Damn. What surprised him was the depth of his disappointment. But you said Finn was the first? Aaron nodded. At the end of August, I had a barbecue at my place. Ben turned up with his new boyfriend, which was a bit of a shocker for some of us because, wow, talk about history. And then Seb, the one we thought was our happy-go-lucky, one-night stand kind of guy, he turned up with a guy, and on the look of things, Seb is smitten. I see what you mean. Three of them found partners in a short space of time. What's in the water supply around here? He quipped. Aaron shook his head. Uh-uh. It didn't stop there. Dylan showed up at Levi's Halloween party with a guy in tow, and boy, did he cause a stir. Aaron leaned in. Mark is a gay porn star. Oh, okay. He was a porn star. Sounds as if he's made a career move. Dean couldn't resist. Marku, I might know the name. Aaron blinked. You follow gay porn? He figured he'd gone this far. Well, duh. I'm gay. Aaron stared at him and Dean chuckled. What? You've never heard of an artist being gay? And you still haven't told me his last name. Mark Roman. Dean's mouth fell open. Oh my. Your friend Dylan has extremely good taste. He's a lucky man. So, was that it? Four new partners? Aaron shook his head once more. Five. Sean came to Levi's New Year's Eve party with the guy who'd been his dad's in-home nurse. I think it was a very recent development, but they seemed like a good fit. He sighed. He sighed. And they're all coming to my house on Sunday. Is it a special occasion or just an excuse to get together? It's my version of an Easter party. Everyone's bringing a dish of something. And there'll be a chocolate fountain with yummy stuff to dip into it for dessert. Dean licked his lips. Oh, God. I'm drooling. Aaron stilled. 
Why don't you come too? What the hell? I, I, I couldn't. I don't know these people. And they don't know me. Besides, wouldn't it look odd? Hey guys, here's a painter I met a week ago. I feel as if I were intruding. Aaron widened his eyes. But if you don't, there will be 13 of us. That's bad luck. You're superstitious. Me? Not so much, but Noah is. He's the kind of guy who will go miles out of his way to avoid walking on and her... I was about to say walking under a bladder. Superstitious. Me? Not so much, but Noah is. He's the kind of guy who will go miles out of his way to avoid walking under a ladder. He doesn't put shoes on the table, because that's bad luck. He'll throw spilled salt over his shoulder. I know, because some of it hit me in the eye once. See, see, you have to come. I don't like the way I did that. I'm going to do it again. Back to the bladder line. Stitious. <clears throat> me? Not so much, but Noah is. He's the kind of guy who will go miles out of his way to avoid walking under a ladder. He doesn't put shoes on the table because it's bad luck. He'll throw spilled salt over his shoulder. I know, because some of it hit me in the eye once. So you see, I mean, you have to come. Dean wasn't convinced. I wouldn't want to feel awkward. Aaron expelled a breath. Okay, I'll come clean. You'd be doing me a huge favor if you came. How so? Because... He looked Dean in the eye. I'm the one who's going to feel you. So, because... He looked Dean in the eye. I'm the one who's going to be feeling awkward, okay? Dean frowned. But why? These guys are your friends. Sure, but it's not the same. I had my first taste of that at New Year's midnight. Blah, blah, blah. They're your friends. Sure, but... It's not the same. I had my first taste of that at New Year's. Midnight came, and all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of ten guys all sharing lingering romantic kisses. Dean saw the light. You want me to be a buffer? Aaron nodded. Except that makes it sound as if I'm inviting you to use you, and that's not right. I know I've only met you twice, but I... I feel like we've made a... connection... Dean suggested. Aaron's smile lit up his face. Yes, exactly. And you're sure neither of us... Aaron's smile lit up his face. Yes, exactly. And you're sure neither of the other unattached guys is going to turn up with a new partner, negating the need for me to make the number up to 14. Trust me, not going to happen. So, will you? He gave a hopeful smile. Do I need to remind you there'll be chocolate? Dean laughed. <laughs> okay, I'm sold. I'll come. Just give me an idea of what I should bring. You don't need to do that. Yes, I do. He replied in a firm voice. So let me know by Friday, and I'll rustle something up for Sunday. He picked up his fork. Now, can I finish my cake? Aaron chuckled. Be my guest. And thank you. Dean ate another matter. <clears throat> Aaron chuckled. Be my guest. And thank you. Dean ate another mouthful. Talk about ironic. Ash said he needed to get back on the horse, and Dean could quite willingly have done so with Aaron. Except he's straight. Been there, done that. Got the scars to prove it. 300 books. I've not run into a single one of them that's actually straight yet. Not one. <clears throat>